everybody, here we are back in my workshop. My name's Colin Way. Um, it's another uh, Turning Tuesday for the um, Skill Centre at Home um, series. So today we're looking at a bit of a technical day really. We're going to do two uh, things. Firstly, uh, thread chasing, which is um, one of the questions that was asked a couple of weeks ago, I think. Um, and then secondly, we're going to do some long hole boring. So if you're going to make a lamp, that sort of thing, how to get that hole down through the centre. There's a fair bit of kit in this one. Um, and to be honest, the first thing we're going to do, the thread chasing, um, I've done about three times. Um, two of those times were about an hour ago. So, um, and so far my record is 50%. So we, anything could go uh, right or go wrong um, this afternoon, but um, we may as well learn together. I'm learning as I go as well, as much as everybody else. So, uh, so here you go. So, thread chasing. I've done a, a little bit of... Uh, thread chasing um, probably about 15 to 20 years ago um, and I was fortunate enough to know the late great uh, Alan Batty uh, and Bill Jones actually and those two guys were the, the authority basically on thread chasing um, but it's not my style of work I don't tend to um, need to do any thread chasing uh, at all so like I say um, apart from all those years ago an hour ago was my first practice. So um, this is the one that worked um, and the one that didn't work is in the wood bin over there. Um, so what we're trying to do is create a, a male and a female thread um, and have those then to screw together. Now this one, um, I'm relatively happy with this one. I had to do a little bit of jigging around to get the size right. And do excuse me, all those um, turners out there that have been thread chasing for years that know what they're doing, I'm probably going to do a whole load of things wrong, but the success at the end of the day is what we're trying to achieve. And it, the question was, can we have a bit of an insight into thread chasing? That's what we're going to do. All right, so that's the thread. Um, so I've got a few bits of kit I'm going to show you. We're also going to get you some close-ups of these things as well. Um, I'm using rock maple, and that's one thing that I've learned. And I've done some research online. Um, and for your information, if you wanted to have a look out there, if you look, look at Thread Chasing um, by Alan Batty, um, that's the video that I looked at on YouTube uh, last night to get the, the technical bits really, the speeds and, and things like that, some of the finer points that you need to have practiced to, to get this right. Um, so yeah, that, that YouTube video, absolutely spot on, absolutely perfect. Um, it, one of the things that he said though is the timber choice is very important so um, a very dense timber is where we're going really now he was demonstrating on boxwood and the timber called lignum vitae um, which is the two very very um, dense timbers um, i've got rock maple it's the hardest well i have got some lignum over there but i didn't want to cut it up for this so i've got some very very hard um rock maple um, it's actually working okay. It is a little bit woolly in places, but it works. It's good for me practicing and wasting timber. Um, I could turn that into a box afterwards if I wanted to, but for this project, we're just going to look at making the actual thread. Okay, I'm not even going to talk about the, the lamp making. We'll do that in a second. We'll just do one thing at a time. Charlie's going to get very close. Um, um, and again, as uh, we're working between myself and Charlie, we'll get the direction going, we'll get, get in nice and close. So if you've got any questions, fire them through. Charlie will be able to see them. Um, he'll be able to, to ask me. Um, likewise, if you want to pick up on a point that I might have glossed over without realising, again, just say, just ask me again. Okay, so let's have a look. Just yeah, come in just a little bit closer, Charlie. We're not looking at the work yet. I just want to show people the, the tools that I'm using. So I'm using two thread chasing tools. We've got one for internal threads and one for external threads. So those are the tools themselves. They look very, very shiny, very glossy, um, because this is the third use, like I said. Um, brand new out the packet, courtesy um, of Axminster Tools, of course. Um, these are the ones I'm using. These are Crown thread chasing tools, 26 TPI. Um, and this little manual here was written by Bill Jones, one of the, the, the lads that I was talk, talking to you about. Um, and uh, exactly the same tools. Now that was probably printed, I would have said, about 20 years ago, um, but we're still using the same tools. Um, that little booklet, incidentally, that comes with the thread chasing tools is a huge amount of information. It's only tiny, um, but it has all the relevant and really, really important things like speeds, um, things to look for in terms of errors that you might make, cross-threading, lazy-threading, all that sort of stuff. 
So it's um, a good little purchase, that one. And just pop that to one side for the moment. So those are the tools. So we're going to start off by doing the internal thread of what would have been, I guess, the, the lid of the box, if it's going to be a box. And so that's going to be using this one here. Now, if you use the tool rest flat on, so if you were hollowing out, for instance, the, the, the orientation you would have the tool rest, that can cause a few issues as you're bringing that thread away. Um, the issues are um, catching, because this isn't a straight tool, so it catches on the tool rest. So traditionally, you're going to be using an armrest. Um, now, one of the best armrests out there is a Bill Jones armrest. Um, I don't have one of those. So I'm going to use my recess tool that I used last week for the pepper grinders. What's going to work perfectly is a little armrest. I'm going to be able to hold that and control the, um, the thread cutting tool um, nicely with that. Now I'll show you in a minute. That's the one we're going to start with. Um, all I've done on the other one, I just put a little um, grind on the top as well. So just a little secondary grind. Um, not so much a negative rate, but it, it, it's going to calm that scraping action down a little bit. Um, we don't do too much sharpening to the, in no, sorry, we don't do too much um, grinding to these. Mainly it's going to be diamond file once I've got that hollow grind there. Um, and the same in time with that one. You never touch the working edge, this serrated edge. It's sharpened only on the top. Okay, otherwise you'll just ruin that thread. So remember, this is a 26 TPI. Other tools that I'm going to use, I've got a, a quarter inch or um, uh, a quarter inch or six mil bowl gouge there. Um, I've got a skew chisel, okay, just a regular standard skew, any skew will do. Um, and then we've got a one eighth or, or three mil parting tool. So they're all going to be um, used on this project, as well as a set of calipers, um, a vernier calipers here. Um, that's just going to make our life a bit easier. I have to admit, I'm a little bit nervous about this because I want it to work. So we'll see, we'll see. So what am I doing first? We're going to do, if we're going to pretend that this is a box, let's part this in two. So just a little scribe line. And there's a few little hints and tips I looked from just that one hour video last night that I learned. This was one of them. This is going to be a box. You want the grain to join up when you feed, put it back together again. So I put a, um, a little foot on either side. So we can turn this over in a minute and hold this side. So this is going to be the join here-ish, somewhere like that. Top of the box, okay, bottom of the box there. And then we'll make those threads to, jo to, um, to the actual join together. So my first job is just to part that in two. So let's go for the parting tool initially. So now, Charlie, I think we can come in and concentrate on the actual work that's being done here. As much overhead stuff as possible, please. Um, just so people can see what's happening with the tool as well. And if we need to have lighting on, we've got lighting on the camera, so we can maybe put one of those on, that'll help. Um, that makes a difference, I think. So there's my line, okay. And I'm going to turn the lathe speed to zero, turn the lathe on. There we are, and I'm going to start off by making a cut. Now when you're parting off to any depth, it's quite important that you don't make a single cut. You make around about a cut and a half, just to give the tool plenty of, of room. And keep overtaking your initial cut just so there's no grabbing and binding up. Here we go. So I'll just make sure I grab that one. There we are, just stops in the hand. That can be put to one side for the moment. Stop the machine. Okay. I'm going to take a little bit of the diameter away from here just to make it easier on myself. So just a, a, a nice little shearing cut with a, with a bowl gouge. There we are. 
And now we're gonna work on that face. So again, just a little change there, Charlie. I'm gonna start working inside this piece now. Okay. So I'm gonna start by just cleaning. Put the camera in position. So just cleaning off that face. Now we're using this this flute at around about two o'clock and I'm putting pressure at the length of the tool. That pushes the bevel against the, the timber and the timber can then, or the chisel can then slide. That creates your nice smooth um, line. If you're finding that you're using this hand to push forward, your forward hand to push forward, then you're actually releasing the bevel from the work and you get, you're basically just, just um, dragging that chisel tip across the surface. Don't want that. Um, was it a 26 TPI shape? Chaser. Thread chasing tool, yeah, 26 TPI this one. Now, I'm not going by any size here. Let's, let's, uh, let's just open up a recess. So I'm not hollowing this out as if it were a box, I'm just doing enough to do the thread. So you guys, just so you guys can see, remember we want to do two projects today. There we are, let's just... Make that nice and square. Now, I'm going to use a skew initially, just to square that bottom up. If you've got box making tools, guys, that's what you're gonna be doing. I don't make a lot of boxes, but if you've got box making tools, use your, your box scrapers to do what I'm doing here. Oh, what wood are you using? This is rock maple. Really, really hard stuff. Now, I'm gonna just test to make sure that that uh, it's a nice 90 degree angle inside. I doubt whether it is at this stage. So this is one of the little tips that I picked up from Alan Batty's video yesterday. Put your pencil up against the wall and look where that point, that pencil's pointing. It's not quite 90 degrees yet. It's not quite true. So we're just going to correct that and then we'll do our little pencil check again. Do another one. There we are, that's more like it. So we're nice and square. Now the next thing we're gonna do is put a little recess in. So using the recess tool, what I don't wanna have happen, you see, is when we start thread chasing inwards, I don't wanna suddenly hit the bottom of the box lid and then uh, strip the thread. So I'm gonna put a little recess. Again, if you've got box making um, scrapers, use those. There we are, so just using that, that face there. And then lastly, before we start actually chasing, we're gonna just round that edge over. That's gonna make life a lot easier when we come to start that thread off. There we go. So let's have a look, see where we are, and let's set the lathe up ready to thread chase. It's a little bit woolly, you see what I mean? I don't know whether the camera can pick that up, but it's a little bit woolly. Right, so let's start off. Now, this is gonna be a little bit counterintuitive because we're actually gonna start off with the tool rest that way. Okay, and that now is gonna be my hook tool. Or armrest. And we're gonna use the thread chaser here. Now this is gonna mean that I've got a nice light touch as we go in, because we're gonna come in at, a, at an angle to start with. Back a little bit further. And what I want to be able to do is as I get to the edge, before I hit the bottom, release with that hook tool, come away. And our start, our initial touches are gonna be very light. If you think you're touching light, half that by about 50% and you'll be about there. Um, the other thing is about speed. We wanna be down, Bill Jones in his leaflet there says 400. Um, Alan Batty yesterday was saying anything from about 280 to 400. So I'm going to go um, in between, let's go for 370, 380, 370, something like that. It's going to seem awfully slow. Um, 
Now, I'm not making any excuses that way. I'm making lots of excuses, actually. Um, remember, I have a 50% success rate here. So let's let's see what happens. So there we are. There's my there's my armrest. And all we're going to do, a nice, gentle start. And I'm pushing inwards. I'm on the corner first. I'm not using the tip, I'm using the main section of that thread chaser. And as the cut, or as the thread starts, I'm just gonna start bringing the tool around to lengthen the thread. Once you've got it, the thread started, it hooks in and guides itself almost. You can't be gentle enough on this. So we're coming around now, we're almost covered. I just want to go a little bit deeper though. think we're there. We'll just stop that and have a quick look just to make sure. Yeah, we'll just do a little bit more just to be doubly sure, but I think that's pretty much there. I think it's and with anything like this, it's, it's all down to practice. In Bill Jones's leaflet, he said uh, the best way to get good at this is do lots of thread chasing. Set yourself up with about 50 boxes to do um, and thread chase all of those 50 boxes and you're going to be halfway there. Um, so I'm number three at the moment. Okay, so you can see the thread at the moment. Okay, that's, that's relatively, sorry, sorry, Charlie. Thread, relatively happy with that. One thing I didn't do, let's put that back on. I forgot to do a little recess. Uh, I've, the difference between making one and making two, I've learned a couple of things already, or I've learned lots of things already. I'm just gonna cut a little recess in here. That's gonna help me with sizing. Shouldn't have really taken that off before I done that, but never mind. It's been 20 minutes. Has it been 20 minutes already? Good minute. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to size that with my vernier. Okay, we're on about 54 there. So that can come off now. Let's say that's going to be the lid of the box eventually. We'll go over to will be the top this is going to be the male thread next um do you think 18 tpi would be better yeah of course the threads are going to be a little bit easier to to work on um i i quite like that that 26 it seems to be working fine for me at the moment but yeah absolutely you want to go go um go coarser do i don't know about better different is the word i suppose Right, just tidying up that surface, get the calipers in there, so. Now we have to do the same thing. That has to be parallel, nice and square. Go back to my trusted skew. 
again, if you have a flat scraper, then go for it. And all I'm going to do is just check it in the lid in a moment. Do the same thing at the top here, nice little, little relief. I'm just going to check the diameter. So I think it might be a little bit big at the moment. Oh, no, perfect. That was a stroke of luck. So just a little bit of relief there. Um, and then again, round with the Taurus, let's turn him down to thread chasing speed. So if you remember, I was doing that at about, about 37, 3, uh, 370, 380. So that seems very slow to us um, as wood turners. We're normally working a lot faster than that. There we are, 370. Now, remember what I said. If you think you're making a light touch, decrease the, the that again by a further 50% and you'll be there. Now, this is my... Um, does the tool want to pull into the thread? Does it? It will do. If I haven't messed it up, it will do. There we are. So I'm at the moment. I'm seventy-five percent wrong. <laughs> Let me just take that off. Excuse me, Charlie. I'm going to make a mess. I'm gonna have another go, that didn't go right. So I wasn't happy with that one. Hmm? So we're gonna have another go. Sorry about that one.
I bet Bill Jones and Alan are up there laughing at me at the moment. Well, they wouldn't because they were too much like gentlemen to do that, but. Go. Right, let's have another go, Charlie. So, a little recess. So, down to correct speed again. So, about 370. Right, remember, nice and gentle, Colwyn. Round that over. I just talk the right way as well. Okay, we're there, nearly. Remember, don't hit the bottom of the, the lid. Right, we're just gonna check that and see if it'll thread on. Oh, a little bit tight at the top there, so we'll just skim a little bit off. That noise, we can take a little bit of wax to that if that causes a problem. Let's just, just take a little, a little skim at the top there. It wasn't quite parallel. Back down to, back down to um, chasing speed. You know, once you've got that thread going, it follows it so nicely. Well guys, I think I've kept my 50% record, so I'm, Relatively happy with that. There we are. I can take a big sigh of relief because we've got a successful one. Um, and that can be finished. A little bit of wax. So a little bit of your... A little bit of your turning wax. Whichever one you choose to use. Chestnut, Liberon, Hampshire Sheen. All of those guys do a great wax. So use one of those. Um, just a little bit of wax on there and that'll, or even candle wax, I would have thought. Again, there's lots of people out there that know an awful lot more than I do about the subject. There we are, much better already.
Okay, there we are, Charlie. If you could just take the camera back a little bit. And there we are. So we have a successful thread, thank goodness. So there, there's a, 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 exactly what we were looking for, a little insight into those tools. Um, I've got a successful thread after three attempts, so we're okay. So four attempts, sorry, we've done two today. Uh, a successful thread after four attempts, so we've got 50% success right there. So I encourage you, have a go at it. Um, you'll make mistakes, I make mistakes, you saw them happen live on camera there. But the information that comes with the actual thread chasing tools and that little video that I looked at last night were a massive amount of, of information in there. I've learned so much just in that 24 hour space. Um, and that's how we're, we're just all gonna get better. So there we are. So thank you, Bill Jones, and thank you, Alan Batty. Okay, so let's put those tools just away for the minute. The next thing we're gonna look at, and I'm gonna go through this a little bit quicker because as usual, time is fleeting. Um, it's something I'm a little bit more at home with. This is uh, long hole boring. Now, if you remember what we were talking about last week, um, the project for Thursday this week is going to be a scrap wood bowl. And that was suggested, I've got the list here, this that was suggested um, by Brian. And after he had seen a video by Olivier Gomez, French Turner, um, and he's got uh, a video of making a scrap wood bowl on YouTube. Olivia Gomez. So have a look at that, that video as well if you want to. And that was put in by Brian. So I saw the video and I thought to him, yeah, that, that's a really, really good idea. It's something great for one of the live ones. So these are the pieces of scrap that I've cut up. I purposely haven't glued them yet because I wanted to show you what they are. They're literally I've, from all my scrap pieces of timber um, in the racks. I've just cut them or planed them first so the surfaces are good. Cut them up um, and then Tomorrow, well, this evening and tomorrow, I'm going to glue them up all ready for Thursday. We're going to turn a bowl out of them, but I've just put them in order so we've got a nice, um, even mixture. You can, of course, have them random, depends on what scrap wood you've got, and that's going to make a nice 10 by 2 bowl blank. So that's going to be um, for Thursday. Um, but in the meantime, I thought, well, if I'm making a bowl blank, let's make a lamp blank as well to mimic to mimic my first attempt at wood turning at school 30 odd years ago. That was the one that was uh, I done at the ripe old age of 13. It's still in one piece. So there's the blank. And we're gonna look at long hole boring. So a few things we need to do. We're gonna start off turning between centers. It's been half an hour. Been half an hour. We've got another half an hour. We should get there within a half an hour. Okay, so let's just pop that between centers. I'm gonna put a mask on for some of this and just some um, a little bit more protection than my um, glasses are gonna give me. Just because we're putting a much bigger lump on now, I wanna be careful, lay speed to zero before I do anything else. We'll start off with um, a pro drive. Okay, gonna start off with a pro drive. These are the serrated teeth here and the little sprung center in the middle. That can go in there. I think we'll start off also with, this is gonna be the sensor that we use. Charlie, can you just come in a little bit closer? This is gonna be the tailstock sensor that we use. You know, this is the reason that we're doing this long hole boring. Um, people, somebody asked last week, um, I'm sorry, I, I can't remember the name, um, what the uh, live senders with the chip ejectors work like. So this is one. Uh, we're going to use this one to start with. This is a removable tip on the inside, on the inside. So once we've centered, um, we can then remove that tip and then we can bore all the way through because it's a hollow center with our auger. Okay, so that's going to go in there. That's going to be my starting point. First of all, though, we just need to rough this piece down. Um, and let's start, we start off by roughing this side or cleaning that side up rather. We're gonna rough the whole piece down, but clean that side. I have already centered it. I wanted to save some time 
um, knowing what we had to do today. There we are. It's nice. Could we have one of those lights on, shall we? Lovely. Um, so I'm gonna. I might be a little bit muffled for a for a little bit because I'm gonna wear my uh, my visor. All right. So visor on. Charlie's gonna stand back a bit out the way. Lay speed to zero. Tall rest down below centre. Turn the machine on and then we'll start, start turning out. One, sorry, before I do this, one safety um, note here. If you're gonna do this, you need to make sure that you're using um, in-date glue and a good quality glue. Charlie, can you get me the, the glue tub over there in on the, on the bench? Um, yeah, glue doesn't like living in a workshop, especially when it gets really, really cold. Not um, um, this type of glue. Um, wood, wood glues generally don't. So I'm using the Type Bond. This is um, the uh, Type Bond 2, um, but any of the Type Bonds I find for this work do me well. Um, it's in date, it's current, it's not an old tub that's been in, overwintered in here, got cold, frozen, all that sort of stuff. It's a good, up to date, um, in date glue um, and strong as well. It's also um, clamped really well. So every surface it was, was clean, um, glued, clamped, and solid now. So I know that I'm going to remain as safe as possible and things aren't going to fly apart. So. Now I can treat it like a normal blank. So rough and gouge to start with, lay speed down to zero before we start, turn the lathe on, Charlie stands back a little bit. If you're asking a question at the moment, Charlie can't see the camera because he's gone out the way for safety. There we are, and now let's just start putting it. I have cut the corners off to stop some of that pressure on the blank. A little bit of a sharpen there with the with the CBN. Have a look and see what we have. Okay, that's okay for the minute. I'm going to do the, the boring bit first, actually, or the long haul boring bit first. I've got friends and family watching this that aren't into turning. I'm sure they're finding most of it boring, but let's crack on. I'm just going to tidy up this space. This is going to be the bottom of my um, lamp, so I'm just going to make that nice and clean. Can just come around there, Charlie, just so people can see? But what I wanted to do there is just make sure it's smooth. This is going to be the underside. Um, and so I don't want any saw cuts or anything like that. Lamps are one of those things, if you want to put bays on them, you could do, I suppose, I hate bays, to be honest, it's one of my pet hates, but um, you could do on the bottom of, of this, but this is the point to sand if you want to. I need to make sure that that little bit of waste that I've left is going to be smaller 
than these two centers. This one is my drive center. This one is my boring center. This is gonna give me enough clearance here to put um, a cord grip in, which is an essential part of um, lamp making and safety, just to prevent you from being able to pull um, a live wire out from the, um, the lamp mechanism. So that gives me enough room to be able to do that. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll start. So um, we need to change a couple of things on the lathe. First of all, that center can stay there, but on the live end, we need to take out the little pin in the center. Okay, so that one's got to remove, be removed. So let's just take that out. Been 40 minutes. Been 40 minutes, that's fine, we'll be good. Okay, so that, that pin drops out. Incidentally, you do get two pins. If you didn't want to use the ring part of that center, um, the other pin that you get, I've got them here still. The other pin that you get is a, is a much longer one. Okay, so those are the two sizes of center. Uh, no, those are the two sizes of center that you get with that. Okay, one being extra long. So you can, uh, you can use your live center then just with that point in there. Okay, so we don't need that anyway anymore. So let's um, remount it. I can now mount on the circle that we've got there. So in between centers, make sure we're in the same spot that side and make sure that that then mounts onto the center. There we are. So now I've got free um, access up the center of that piece. Yeah, so if you can go back now, Charlie, because we need to get the whole of the lathe in. Okay, so I'm going to drill up to about there. Okay, this is the auger bit. Okay, so a really nice twisted auger on this side. Bit of a relief here to stop screeching. Um, but if I work with the length of my lathe here, I'm just going to adjust that until I get to that line. There, that's going to be where I start. A lot of people say positioning of a lathe, how, where do you position, how do you position? You've got to imagine if you want to do long hole boring, you need access at tail stock as well as the head stock as well. You're going to need access to both sides. Um, in terms of speed, regular turning speed, I reckon I can hear about sort of 12 to 1400 will work. And we're going to add a lubricant to the drilling. If you don't do that, you get an awful lot of screeching, and we really hate screeching. It's, it's, it's quite damaging to your ears. So I'm going to use a wax. Any one of your waxes, the Liberon one, the chestnut one, um, and any wax that you have, and that's just enough, just to, just enough to um, help stop screeching. It's just friction that you're you're preventing from building up. So. Here we go. So let's start. I'm just going to grab my goggles. Okay, lay speed down to zero, turn it up. So 12 to 1400 revs. There we are. We're going to go straight up through the length of the tail stock. Just wiggle it a little bit to get it in. Can everybody see what I'm doing here, Charlie? So just wiggle it to get past the, the tail bit, the, the, um, the center, fill the bite point, there's the timber, and you're going to push forward and back. And you'll watch the shavings coming out of the exhaust here. See a little bit of screeching starting already. As soon as that starts, I want to start thinking about lubricating that cutter. This is a horrible noise, and like I say, it can be quite damaging to your ears. So my wax is going to come around, a little bit of that on the end, back in, you see those shavings coming out there really well, it's doing the job so well, so a bit more wax if you're getting a lot of screeching. Just be patient, it's like the thread chasing earlier. We just gotta be patient a little bit at a time. We're not in a rush. Feel the end of the center. 
And keep clearing. If you don't clear, you're going to get this binding up. So keep clearing that waste. There we are, we're about there. So that's the length. That's where we want it to be. So we can stop the lathe. So we've now gone up to, to that point, so where our pencil mark was. So now we're going to just change the centers a little bit. So that remains where it is. Okay, I've already made the center uh, there, the little, little ring, that's all there and, and prepped. So I've just got to change this one now. We're going to change that one for what we call a counter ball. And this is all on the Axminster website. If you look at long hole boring equipment, you'll find it all there. Now the counter ball, okay, is this piece, okay? Counter ball is a, a drive with this little, um, uh, the same diameter basically as the auger. Um, if you buy one of those, you can then buy this head, this cutter head, as an extra. So you're not buying two centers, you buy one center and just the extra head to go on that center. And then they just undo with a little grub screw, little Allen key there, um, which you get with it, um, so you can swap them over. So we're gonna use that one in a moment, but for the start with, we're just gonna pop that one up. And this is gonna ensure that the hole that you've now started can locate and still drive. So that's now acting as a drive. I'm gonna finish the hole there we are, by doing exactly the same thing. Speed is good, I'm happy with the speed. We've got a drive at that side now. So we've finished the hole. Speed it in. Little bit of wax is to stop our noise. How long have we been, Charlie? Around 50 minutes. 50 minutes. We are through, everybody. Just going to clear some of that salt. There we are. So we've met our existing, or the first hole that we've done. So now we're all the way through. Now before I start, I'm going to use the other head. I just want to drill a small hole up through there using this All I'm going to do is position my tool rest right up against the right up against this. Go for a small one. The flat here. So just leave them with a little flat, just to um, just for safety, really. It's just going to stop stop that spinning whilst I drill. It won't do it. It won't spin anyway. But there we go. So that can't go anywhere. So all we're going to do: lane speed to zero. Turn the machine on. Around that side, Charlie. Yeah, just to see what's going on. See what's going on in there. Just hold it freehand, just so people can see. So of course, this has been guided by the centile we've already drilled. Well, that's told me it's enough. So now we can take that out, and that's going to give us enough, enough of a hole that we can put our ball clamp in. I'll show you the camera. 
All right, so you've got a nice little centered hole, which is, which is really, really nice. So we go back with our drive on the now finished side here. I would suggest at this point you put a little hole in there for the, the, um, the cord to come through the side. We're not going to worry about it just at the moment because time's getting away again. And I'll be honest, all I do, grab a drill bit, lock the lathe up and drill through just so you go through to that uh, that center piece um, you can drill it when it's in its square form if you want to you just need to make sure that you don't take too much off the underside when you uh, when you come to uh, true the base up so now we're just doing going to do a basic shape i'm not going to sand and finish it um, again just because of time you've got your own ideas about design and shape i'm not going to copy the one that i made 13 years ago i'm going to do a version of it because I'm that was lovely at the time I'm not overly happy doing another one the same shape if you get what I'm saying so we're just we're just going to adjust things a little bit I'm going to put my visor back on again I'm going to make a lot of mess yeah come in nice and close I also want to put the extractor on so it's going to be a bit of noise I'm going to be muffled because I'm going to be in my visor but I want to do this nice and quick Charlie's going to go to the other side of the room once he's got it in position. Nine minutes. Say again? Nine minutes. Nine minutes to go for an hour. Well, we'll do this in five then. Keep that base nice and big. Do like a bottom shape ish.
in direzione c'è I'm going to finish it, I can carry on, but I just want you to see, I'll get that all finished and sanded. I'm going to get that all finished and sanded up for you for Thursday, before we start our, our live session on Thursday. This is going to be quite nice, it's going to complement the, the old one quite nicely. There's lots of timbers in there, we've got sapele, we've got maple, we've got oak, a couple of different varieties of oak actually, it's really pretty stuff. If we get this sanded and a, an actual finish put on, that's all those colours are going to boom. They're going to jump right out. So there. That was today's, like I say, a little bit of a technical question, a quick technical demonstration today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, one thing I have promised to do, um, and it is a, a question from, from again, someone a couple of weeks ago. Um, Everyone was asking, are we ever going to get to see Charlie? So Charlie, can you just come over here for a minute, just very quickly? He's shaking his head at me. Come on over a minute. Um, so this is Charlie. Charlie's been behind the scenes. So um, that's him. Really, really embarrassed to be here. Um, we're going to be back Thursday. Um, he's already asked me not to say this, but on Thursday, it's his 16th birthday. He's adamant that he wants to do the camera work still. So um, he'll be back here on Thursday with me. It'll be a happy 16th for him. Um, until then, happy turning. I'm going to go and get ready and turn the camera off. Happy turning. He's going to kill me when we come off of here. Um, and I'll see you Thursday. Um, enjoy yourselves. It's going to be um, all about the, um, the scrap wood bowl, if you remember, on Thursday. So get gluing, get planing. Happy turning, and I'll see you on Thursday. Same time, same place, 4 o'clock, my workshop.